Mexico, our southern neighbor, and then a longtime very good customer of, of U.S. corn, actually U.S. feed grains in, in total. Um, and with the 20-year NAFTA uh, agreement, that's obviously even opened up the market to uh, even exp expanded feed grain uh, demand. We see Mexico, uh, a lot of the aspects of the market growing, the overall population continues to grow, the economy uh, continues to grow, and with that we see d demand for meat, milk, and eggs continuing to grow, which then leads to uh, growth of, of increased feed grain demand. Well, you have everything from you know the strong dollar, which against weak currencies around the world, which is creating a very uh, a lot of competition for U.S. corn and other feed grains. Um, we're seeing a little bit of shift uh, in, in uh, shipments of, of U.S. sorghum. Again, Mexico typically or historically was our number one market for U.S. sorghum exports. Here in the last uh, two, two and a half years, China has overtaken that. Um, and so we've seen <clears throat> the amount of sorghum being shipped from the U.S. to Mexico decline um, and replace with that uh, is then corn filling in that demand in Mexico that was being met by U.S. sorghum. The El Nino causing a, a major drought in South Africa and some of their neighboring countries. There's uh, talk, of, uh, looks like there'll be demand for anywhere from three uh, talks of up to five, five and a half million tons of total corn, both yellow and white, going into South Africa. In the meantime, I know the South African trade and, uh, and demand is also looking at Mexico as a potential place to source uh, some of that white corn that they're going to need. Um, but as we see, if we were to see white corn leave Mexico in, in large amounts, that means they would then have to backfill again that corn demand. And most likely, most of that would be then filled with uh, probably yellow corn from the U.S. to come in and into the feed sector to make up for that. that growing feed and livestock sector in Mexico is, is, is a growing demand for, for corn, barley, sorghum, uh, DDGS. Um, but we, we, on, on the ethanol side, with, the, with some of the regulations and, uh, that are going to open up the, the petroleum market in Mexico, um, we really see ethanol is, and Mexico as being a key uh, new ethanol market for it. We're seeing some product going there today. Um, again, as, these, as their policy changes over the next uh, uh, year to, and two, uh, I think we'll, we see some real potential. We're gearing up to really go after Mexico as one of our uh, key markets uh, on, on our ethanol market promotion over for 2016 and 2017. Um, DDGS, it's always already a very, it's our number two market for DDGS, but even with that, we see some pockets of demand in, in Mexico that are not using DDGS. We see the cattle industry in southern Mexico. We see the swine industry in, in northwest Mexico. And our staff in our Mexico City office are already have been and are going to continue to gear up and try and see what we can do to open up those two pockets of Mexico to increase uh, use of DDGS from the U.S. Um, and even on the barley side, the, I think the correlation between the, some of the Mexican beer companies um, and our members in the, in the barley industry here in the U.S. has led to uh, both barley um, malt and malting barley um, pr production from the U.S. going to Mexico. And, and we see that and we're, we're trying to play a part where we can to c c continue those business relationships going. <laughs>